Many, if not most, or all of our chronic health issues come from the following. Our environments have radically changed. Meanwhile, our bodies have not. What does that mean? For most of human history, modern humans have lived a particular way. Then, all of a sudden, radically, everything changed. Okay, so what do you do with this information? Look to the past. Oftentimes, if you live more like the ways we evolved to live, you'll solve a lot of your health problems. This includes nutrition, activity, sleep, and more. Again, it's not 100%, but it's pretty damn close. Live the way humans lived for thousands and thousands of years, or at least look for the answers there, and you'll probably find them. Not to counter that great message, mm -hmm. but do you... Do you think that, you know, what we're experiencing in the last, I'd say, I don't know, 30 years or so, uh, like Moore's law and like how fast everything is evolving and changing, that we as a species will actually speed up our ability to adapt to the changing environment and the changing things that we throw at it? Like part of why we are riddled with chronic disease right now, part of why there is an obesity epidemic is because we introduced these processed foods uh, not that long ago and over consumed like crazy. And we, hasn't even, we haven't given our bodies enough time to adapt to this bullshit. Do you, think there is, do you think there's light at the end of the tunnel or an optimistic view of our, our body's resiliency and ability to adapt? Not from an evolutionary standpoint, because we also have simultaneously figured out how to keep ourselves alive, not healthy, but alive long enough to procreate. So the way it would have worked uh, in the past was um, something changed in the environment. Let's say um, we live in a tribe uh, and all of a sudden we all ha we have to migrate to a place that's cloudy. Uh, well, all the darker skinned people um, are probably not going to be able to survive or procreate because darker skinned people take a lot more sunlight to produce the same vitamin D. So What's left over are people with very light skin. Um, but that means that the people who didn't fit the new environment didn't procreate and died. Now, we do a very good job of keeping people alive. So the evolutionary pressures are not the same. Also, uh, the environment is changing so radically and so quickly. I don't think we can evolve um, that quickly. I think what's probably... In, look, look, I'm also not making the argument that we should live in caves and, and yeah. do all that. Cause I know that that's the argument that, you know, people will make like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess we should live right. in caves and throw rocks. No, no, no. I, but there's a lot of answers there. For example, you're probably better off eating a diet that is more like the way that we evolved eating. You're probably better off sleeping, uh, in the same ways we slept back, you know, thousands of years ago where we went down when the sun went down, we came up when the sun went up, we weren't constantly under electric, you know, electric lights, activity, um, social, you know, connection, all that stuff. And that's what we're discovering. It's like we're, we've modified our environment so much, it doesn't match our bodies and our brains and our psyche. And so we have all these chronic health issues that just uh, now, we're just now starting to realize, yeah. oh, this is because um, we're living in ways that our bodies didn't evolve or maybe were designed to live. Yeah, well, we used to, to rely on genes mutating, and then that would require a lot of the population to die off, and then the, this new generation yeah. to pass on these new genes, and you know, said and so forth. But yeah, we've done a better job of keeping like almost everybody alive in terms of like interventions and and healthcare. Uh, but I think the only way like the adaptation process might play a different. Uh, factor in the future is when they get even crazier with this gene editing and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. uh, obviously for what we can, can control uh, to the message, uh, what the what we've learned from all of these generations preceding us, um, that's the stuff that's held you know, the, the most amount of time in terms of like best practices for to keep us healthy years. for yeah. thousands of years. So why not pay attention to that? Okay. Yeah. So then the next question is then, okay, if that, this is true and I agree with you that our bodies probably will not be able to adapt to the changing environment we are now. Does, does the, the, the continued rise in all the chronic issues that we have in our society, is it enough? And at what point is it enough to push us in the direction of realizing like, oh, like, Maybe we will cut out some of these electronics. Uh -huh. Maybe we will stop eating a lot of these processed foods. Maybe we will 
challenge our body in hot and cold temperatures and not try and regulate the temperature perfectly all the time. Maybe we will choose to walk instead of riding around on these scooters. Like, do we do that? And and do as a whole society, because obviously there's there's subsets of small groups of people yeah. that live that way or think this way, right? And Amish would be an example of that. Uh, do we do we all start to move that way? Do we start to reject some of the you know technological things that are that w- that continue to move forward you know according to Moore's law or do we continue to adopt it until it just destroys? I don't us know about inevitably? reject, but we probably will direct them differently. Like uh, there's lots of uh, evidence that shows that as societies become more modern and we meet our basic needs um, like food, shelter, water, um, and we become more wealthy, then we start to focus on uh, problems that are more distant from us. So it's mm. like nobody cares about the the you know ozone layer yeah. when uh, I don't have food to feel. So I'm just going to burn charcoal and dung, and I'm going to do whatever I can to you know provide uh, food for myself and yeah. my family. But past a certain point, when things are all these basic needs are met, then we start to look at other things. And say, okay, well we should probably worry about the ozone layer. We should probably worry about these other things. And then there's there are some success stories like. Um, you know, leaded gasoline, right? We figured out that that was bad for us and, and we took out the lead out of gas and um, cigarettes. This is another big one. I was going to bring up cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah we've like learned that. a lot from just, you know, seeing how that circulated through the population and how we've had to kind of manage and regulate. Yeah. yeah but uh, mean, par- meanwhile, do you know how many people still smoke cigarettes? Oh, a lot. Yeah, there's... <laughs> yeah, they're, it, but like they're educated ton, not and they like know a the lot. risk. <laughs> like it's still a, a smaller lot. percentage of the population, at least in like America, for example, it's declined. Oh, I mean, just yeah. America, but we're talking about the world though right now. Yeah. Give me the numbers on that deck. I actually saw, you know, I watched- uh, You know, in China, yeah, I, think I wonder. Like, I think like one out of every three or two. Bro, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's actually, un- considering what we know, that's, what, that's why I find this an interesting conversation and discussion is because even as much as we know yeah. about that, like it's like one of the single- Things that you could either it's the highest factor for any kind of like uh, disease or, or cancer. Give yeah. me the stats, Doug. If you are yeah. a smoker, well, you know, you know, China wasn't that, not that long ago was very poor. They literally just came out of extreme poverty. So I would predict if they were able to continue, in, you know, becoming wealthier, which people argue, you know, that um, that that things like cigarette smoking will will start to decline. What what does that say, Doug? Okay, so. There's some countries, I don't even know how to pronounce them, and I'm not familiar with them. They're up in around the 50% range. Uh, Myanmar is the first country I recognize at 45.5%. Half the people smoke. Half the people smoke. Uh, and in that case, yeah, the rate of male smoking is a li- little bit higher than females. Right, risky. Uh, France actually is way up there yeah. at 34.6%. Male, female, almost the same. Um I'm seeing big countries that we, you know, like I mean, I find China, China, which I find interesting. Like, uh, for example, another big com- country would be uh, United States, 25%. You know why I don't like the U.S. as an example, Sal, even though you're going to go there? Is because these are things that, that we can measure because we it, they're not measuring the black market. And I bet you there's still a massive black market because of the amount of taxation and regulation that's been put around cigarettes. Yeah. That always drives a black market. So for whatever percentage we went down in smoking as Americans, say like in the last, say, decade or two, I would argue that the black market also significantly increased in that. It, it did, but people smoke way less, dude. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, ask, like, I, mean, I, I, mean I agree because you could go places. I remember I remember as a kid compared to oh, right yeah. now. Bro, right? So everywhere. It's, I, don't, I don't need stats yeah. to see that. So oh, yeah. I'm, not, restaurant, it's like, I'm I, not saying that it's the same or more. I'm I remember, saying like- And it's also like, I know, like I remember um, in Italy when I was a kid, I was 12 and I went there. And everybody was smoking at the dinner table. People were smoking. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. my cousins got delivered. They used to allow you a, smoke on the plane, dude. <laughs> it's so crazy. My cousin got delivered. Yeah. Like my my cousin had a baby. Year this is years ago, right? A long time ago, right? I don't know, forty years ago. She had a baby in a hospital in Sicily, and the doctor put his cigarette down to get the baby <laughs> as he was coming out. So I mean, I mean, check this out though. <laughs> so times. I also would be curious to see these stats. I wa- I just watched that documentary on Jewel. Oh, right. you did? Did you like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It was good. It was just interesting because I didn't know about the whole yeah. the whole trajectory and their story. I mean, the amount of millions and millions of people that were using vapes yep. and e-cigs. So, okay, cigarette smoking declined, but then vaping they came moved. out. There wasn't yeah. even anybody who was vaping just yeah. 20 years ago. 
Yeah, well, so it'd be they, interesting to see. Like they really, advertised it as like a better alternative. Nicotine's obviously. A very, it would have been worse. It would have been worse. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Because the, the nicotine hit. It's the, the story is really interesting how it all how it all played out too. But I mean, I, so I don't know. I, like I don't know uh, if we're gonna get better or if we're just gonna get a lot worse. <laughs> Um, I don't it's know. It's almost but, like we're, it's, we're, it's so sad to say this, but it's almost like we're so dumb of a species that we have to, a bunch of us really have to die off to before like, before we figure it before out, before we really, wait. like it almost has to become this like crazy fear, you know, where it's like, oh my God, you're watching people yeah. die left but, and right in front of you. But again, smoking I, Ebola or something. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, but, but again, I don't want to, um, you know, obviously modern technology is amazing. I mean, the plague in Europe killed one third yeah. Okay. Of yeah. the whole population. Yeah. Imagine that right now. Yeah. One out of every three people dead from the plague. Now, if something like that happened now, we have Nuts. medicines and drugs that will, you know, handle it. That's a, that was a bacterial infection, but generally speaking, right. So I'm not an extremist in that sense. I know there's people who are like, you know, you should wear animal furs that you, you know, kill yourself and have no electricity. I'm not saying that. Um, I, I could see some of the value of that argument, but I think that's not just unrealistic, but I think modern, Life also has some some good things. Um, so I'm not saying any of that, but I think there's a lot of, it, it's a really good compass. It really is. Like you want to look at diet, right? Uh, if you're looking at diet, you don't know what to eat. There's all these diet books that are out there and all these different ways of eating. It's like, if you eat foods that are whole natural, you're you're 90% of the way there. Like foods that don't right. require- right. Choose a food that you could have chose 80 years ago. Yeah. There's a simple way. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can only eat foods that they, we had- That existed 100 years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a real easy way. Right. To and even, even if you look at the foods that did exist 100 years ago, um, like let's look at beef, for example. Okay. So cows, they didn't eat grain. That's not a natural- um, type of food for cows. Uh, mm -hmm. Cows ate grass. That's what they naturally eat. It was later when we industrialized it and we realized if we pump them full grain that we could get so much more money per pound. That's right. Yeah. And they're just, they make some fatter, they gain weight faster. Yep. But if you compare grass-fed beef to grain-fed beef, now people make the argument, oh, the the differences aren't that big. Well, yeah, with one meal. But if you, if you eat beef, you know, three times a week or every day like I do, Makes a difference. Do that over the course of five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years. The difference in fatty acids, the difference in uh, nutrients, um, they make a difference. Yeah. The fatty acid profile alone, grass-fed meat is not as inflammatory as grain-fed meat. Mm -hmm. I feel a huge difference. When we first started working with ButcherBox, so ButcherBox was the first time I had consistent grass-fed meat. Me Before too. that, Me I'd too. go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I'd have to kind of search it out and it wasn't consistent. Now I'd say 80% of the beef that I eat is butcher box. So it's grass fed. Yeah. I feel a difference when I go on vacation or go somewhere and I don't eat grass fed. I do feel more inflamed. Well, especially going through difference. this kind of protocol, like Dr. Cabral has got me on. It's like everything I'm doing right now is to try to kind of uh, reduce quite a bit of this inflammation internally. I totally feel that uh, having any kind of different type of a steak if I'm out to eat. And I have had a few when I've gone out to, to restaurants and I'm like, ooh, it, it's just one of those things. You just feel a little bit of that maybe uh, lethargic kind of yeah. feeling. Like I, It's hard to describe, but it's very like – Distinctive. Yeah, you you guys ever eat uh, like game meat? Yeah. Like oh deer yeah. Or yeah. 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 Well, it's it's, same, it's, it's like it almost same. like energizes you. Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, and it tastes crazy. different. Uh, yeah. It's got a different flavor. You know, speaking of butcher box, have any of you guys done the skillet yet? Have you guys got it yet? I've done it. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So yeah. explain like this to I me like again, it. bro. It, it, it comes it, all to, like what it's is already it? like potato, chicken, vegetables, right? It's like I think yeah. It's, so I onion. think it's mainly potatoes and chicken, and I think bell peppers or onions are in there yeah. too, or something like that. And then they have some type of spices, kind of got a I guess a southwest flavor, if you will. Yeah, it's already seasoned up. I literally, I don't know how. Throw it in a pan? I throw it in, in an iron skillet and then crack two or three eggs on oh, it and make burritos out of it. And it's oh, that sounds bold. Oh, that's a breakfast great burritos at high protein because you got the chicken, yeah. you got the potatoes, and then you have the egg in there, and it's already and it's quick. That's a great and idea. It's bomb. You probably so. could also throw that on uh, rice. 
Oh yeah, you could make it a dinner. So you could, you could turn it into like a you know a rice chicken type of stir fry bowl or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's that easy. That all you have to do is cook the rice, throw it over there. Or I really enjoy it for breakfast. Speaking That's of rice and chicken, like every time Justin eats, because you're on the protocol. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel so bad. You guys bro. fuck with me every chance. Well, every time, just, well, because like, every time he eats now, yeah, no, I, he I, eats what I eat now because bro, he can't eat. So I've many encouraged things. it like everywhere I go, like and I, I just like accept it. You know, it's like yeah. I told you, my kids, and, like it's just it's just funny to me. I laugh because it's like I, I look at it, and I'm just like, oh yeah, that looks. Very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> the very same so, meal I had yesterday. What's your protocol? So you t are you taking antimicrobial herbs? Yep. Antimicrobial herbs and then- um, Avoiding the you food did, You know, better um, reintroducing better bacteria mm -hmm. and, and, you know, doing the whole SIBO protocol. Uh, so it's like, I mean, how many pills is that? Like, so there's, there's a good almost 10 to 12 pills in that regimen. Mm -hmm. And then you got to do like six before meal- um, uh, like breakfast and then you do six kind of like for dinner and then you do all of the, uh, the 12 pills or something for, are night. you experiencing any die off? Do you know what that, what that is? Uh, so is that like a feeling of like, uh, so when you have like, when you're killing off, uh, the bad bacteria, cause that's your antimicrobials do that, right? They kill the bacteria. You get a kill, little bloaty and you uh, can, farty you can and get whatnot. skin. <laughs> yes. Dude. I'm just trying to describe what's you're happening. Just, to me. <laughs> rushing. You blasted me earlier today. So I'm like, just Bro, I'm like, like, TMI. I get, listen, I get a lot of the, the jokes like before, but I wasn't like captain gas over here all the time but man it's like <laughs> going through this and there's some cleansing happening dude, that's what i was gonna me. say yeah. so you get die off some people will feel irritable uh headaches they'll get skin issues it's called a Hurt hertzheimer effect i think yeah are you getting any of that or is it just like kind of like, like i've kind of moving past it a bit you finally. noticed that at first yeah but i did notice that yeah, wow absolutely so uh aurelius we did a protocol on, on him um, now we know why, by the way, his body was reacting because there was the a mold. mold. Yeah. But we did a protocol on him where we had, cause because of the mold, his gut wasn't able to balance itself well. And so he had developed SIBO, you know, we did test it and all that. So we did an anti uh, SIBO protocol mm -hmm. and, um, it made him so he irritable. He was just not himself wow. and it was the die off that was wow. happening because his toxins that's wild. That's great. Yeah. That's like ammo for me, dude. Oh, like, really? Oh, dude. Yeah. I, poor Courtney. She's been like, you are so angry these days. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't have cheese. I can't have, like, literally, I can't even have, like, like tomato. So you think of, like, sauces and, like, things I would oh. normally have with that. Like, and I didn't, I forgot that. There's so many of them, like, oh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't be eating that, like, eggs, that's too. And I was like, oh, whoops. Like, literally, that's why you see just chicken and rice now, because it's just, like. Easy. That's how I that's, that's, that's how I'm not going to mess that up. Today's giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on this month. Maps Bands is half off, and the Hard Gainer Bundle of Programs is also half off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah. Hey, did this guy tell you that I, we're on a thread, uh, Sal, me, Katrina, and Jessica, and it's like our, you know, decorating thread, I would call it. Cause it's the only, <laughs> the hey, only listen, time we hey, use it. Hold so. on a second. Him and Jessica. <laughs> That's the okay. manliest thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> I mean, the only reason why Katrina so there's a reason why you're not in it. Just so you know, okay? <laughs> yeah, you didn't invite me. Just so you know, the only <laughs> reason why Katrina and I are, are not on there is because we weird for Jessica and yeah, yeah, just text yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. This is what they, they do. So this is what they about do. It, yeah. They send each other. I swear to God, this is mm -hmm. true now. Okay. They send each other pictures of the rooms that they just organized or designed, or yeah. a drawer that I organized, mm -hmm. or look at these new pillows like, I got, <laughs> or check out this new, you know, this drawer or it, this whatever painting. Yeah. Literally, this is what they said. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking last night. I and said, I look at this, I'm like, yeah. really I sent her over like uh, the updated room that we just had done, right? Which and, looks nice, by the way. Yeah, uh, thank you. Really and so I send that over and I knew she would appreciate it and see it. And she's like, oh man, we're, she's telling me like all the shit they're going through with the mold. Like, oh my God. She's like, yeah, the designer was supposed to come down, but I'm, I'm waiting until we do all stuff. And I said to her, I said, you know, if you were my wife, I'd let you just go buy all new stuff for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was just, I did. I said, fuck off. Shut up, You did say, fuck off, bro. <laughs> oh, man. He should just let you buy all new stuff. That's what he should do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, what a headache you guys are having to go through with that, huh? I well, mean, we're just being thorough because um, 
it would really be a ugh, God, it would be annoying if we oh yeah if you moved and brought it right and brought it and then <laughs> yeah it, then it, it popped spread in the new place I would lose my mind so Jessica's being very thorough with you know porous materials out uh, non porous <laughs> materials cleaning them a particular way not letting things touch each other but now imagine doing this with a house. Two little kids, a teenage daughter. I mean, it must feel like you guys are uh, like a COVID protocol oh. pro protocol meets your guys' house type oh. of deal. I feel like I that's don't know what... how she's doing it, man. She's like she's handling ninety nine percent of it. I basically come home and she'll like, what do you want me to do? Just move this thing? Now, are you also simultaneously running those air filters too? Always, just, you are. Yeah, ever since ever since we moved in, I keep them on the whole time. You do, uh, yep, yeah. just to make sure if there's anything in the air. I can. Do you know? I can smell it i'm so sensitive to like smell and yeah. air so like that because i think my allergies makes me like hyper sensitive so when i run that air filter i can i can smell and feel a difference in the air does that really? sound yeah like literally i don't does know does it if you use can ozone or, to crisp. purify or is it just a hepa filter uh i don't do you know i can smell it's, ozone. it's, it's just like this the same oh, no. one i think there is an the ozone same. setting on this one anyway there is yeah i mean it's it's a, actually a bigger commercial version than that i took that one that that company sent to us so i have a big one it's even bigger where do you put it the main room my i put it in my master oh, okay yeah i put it in my but i mean i keep the so master. i have air purifiers are like this big and oh, I have them in every room. Oh, okay. And what happens with a small air purifier is it just takes longer to circulate the air. Yeah. So I have one in, in pretty much every single room just running low speed nonstop. But when we first moved in, I turned them on high speed. Yeah. I, so I try and crank mine in the day when the fan isn't annoying because it's loud. Like mm -hmm. you crank it all the way up. It's, woo, I mean, it's like this thing or louder, right? When it's sucking all that. So I try in the daytime and I notice when I come home from work, I can like feel the difference and mm -hmm. smell the mm -hmm. difference in the air. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like how to describe it, but I can actually tell a difference. I don't yeah. know if you could tell a difference. No, I can. I oh, can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, you could smells cleaner. Yeah, for sure. Especially when you first, you know, when you first move in and you got to move boxes mm -hmm. and stuff is dusty. Mm -hmm. I can tell. Well, you can really, I mean, to, the real selling point for me for using it is like you check the filter after you've been running that thing for like a while and you see it. And you're I like, know. Oh my God. That's all the, the fact shit. I need to go change the filters. Yeah. Dude, me. It'd be all dog hair. And oh yeah. Like you see it and you're like, mine. <laughs> and I don't even have my dogs anymore. So I can't imagine if I had them too, it'd be oh, way dude. worse. Dude. Yeah. That's fine. Dude. I got to tell you guys, uh, my kids are hilarious, right? So my, my almost three-year-old, I went to the bathroom the other day and he follows me. I know your kids did, you know, when they were little, yours did that and your son does that too, right? We got to go to the bathroom and they're like, I'm yeah, coming with you. Like, yeah, all right, whatever, dude. He's still there, yeah. So he comes in there with me, you know, I'm going to the bathroom, just chilling, sitting there. And uh, then, you know, he looks at me and he goes, uh, why, why are you taking so long? I'm like, huh? And he goes, are you constipated? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you know He's been watching happened? commercials. How do you know? Yeah, well, it's so wild when they he say He said something. it real good too. Yeah. Constipated. Yeah. You know? yeah. Wow. Like, wow, buddy. I was dying. <laughs> so I go out and I'm like, go tell your mom what you said. Is Baba constipated? First dying. So funny. <laughs> they, you know, there's something like a fascination that kids have with flushing the toilet when they learn how to do yes. something like that. Because Max will do that. He'll just he just wants to flush the toilet. Yeah. And he'll be I'll be in there and he'll be like, Are you done yet? Like yeah. waiting to flush the toilet. Like, he, now, hey bro, quit rushing. Give me. a courtesy You're flush. You're gonna come in here with me, has sit he, down and relax. Has he ever tried just flushing stuff down there? No, not yet. Oh, that's good. Ooh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, remember, Ooh, that's that's a potential. You have the rebellious one, yeah, remember? Yeah. You, have, you have the kid who's trying he to break everything. He still uses too much toilet paper. I'm like still trying to train him that, on that. So Max will, so <laughs> you guys know the whole <laughs> funny thing that he does, right? So he goes in the bathroom for 30 plus minutes with the lights off and his little lantern. And he like, and one of the things he does <laughs> is a lot of times he'll play with the toilet paper and so I'll come in there and he's like got a mount. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. especially because you got to think it's yes, right, dude. dude. So, and then you'll doing? use it and then it's just <laughs> oh god you put all that in there dude we're gonna have clogged dude, pipes that's hilarious oh man it was i i remember going through that and i was like oh my god i'm gonna get a plumber out here yeah no kids my 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 boy he's just he's so counter authority because i have a counter authority streak obviously mm. my wife definitely so it must be a combination of genetics that produced 100%. The most counter authority. Uh, he is like, literally, if yeah. you say mm -hmm. don't do something, he'll do it. So we have to be careful with what we say. And sometimes we slip up. Like, oh, don't go over there. Oh, fuck. Craig, he he he's going to yeah, do it. He's, now he's curious. So now, so I literally use it to, to, it's comical. If I want him to do something, I tell him not to. So like we're eating dinner and he's like, I'm not hungry. And he'll like run around or whatever. So like, all right. And I'll wait, you know, five, 10 minutes. Then I'll cut a piece of meat for him. Be like, you better not eat this. And he comes <laughs> over, ha ha. And he takes a bite runs away. <laughs> So I just do that 10 times in a row. He's all his <laughs> like, yeah. At what point hey, did I figure this out? I tell you guys, so I, I told you I implemented that new thing with uh, Max with the whole reading with the toys. Yeah. Bro, it is working so good that like almost every day that I come home now, he's like showing me, daddy, how many books is this? 
how many books is this? He wants to know how many books, like everything he wants is to read. But I love it that we've taught him that. And I told you I added the whole giveaway to toys. So like it only took one time of like doing that. And he's already made that connection now that when a new toy comes in, we have to read a certain amount of books in whatever daddy says, the, yeah. how many books for that toy. And then two toys get given Bro, to somebody. This is great. great. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not, well, first off, it's teaching him something pretty valuable. But also, it looks like he has your work ethic. Like, if he starts to figure out, I can I, do this to get that. I hope so. That's awesome. I mean, I hope so, right? I hope that's what he what he gets from it. And then I can't wait for the when he can actually read. And if I can motivate him like that. Do you guys to, remember that guy we talked about a long time ago with, with the Pepsi points? And they, they, yeah, made, yeah, yeah. they made the commercial joking. he actually joking. did the jet. Yeah, or you get it. They made a whole documentary yeah, on it. I know. Watch yeah. that. Yeah, I know, dude. That's that, I'll be back. <laughs> Dad, I want a car. <laughs> I want this car. Oh, you got to read 10,000 books, does it? <laughs> I mean, it, it would be hard for me in the position that I'm in, like, because I could do something as crazy as that. And I would probably say, oh, I wouldn't do something like that. But, I mean, shit, if the kid read 10,000 books or something like that, to, I mean, oh, yeah. the level of knowledge that oh, he's yeah. going to acquire. Oh, yeah. something like that. I mean, when I look and back. the discipline. I mean, I don't, you were a big reader, so when you were younger, I wasn't. Yeah. And so when I think when I get asked or I get the chance to talk to like either my like my young niece or nephew or uh, you know kids that are up and coming that listen to us or whatever, I, I tell you what, the if there was anything I could have went back and told myself, it would have been to become a voracious reader earlier in my life. And it just gave me the freedom to read the things I'm interested in. Like I just, I, I looked at reading as like, what did school tell me I have to they read? They gave you a bad relationship. They, like they yeah. created a bad and relationship. And I just, I never was attracted to novels. Yeah. And so I dreaded reading books. Yeah. And so as soon as I didn't have to, I wasn't. I was, yeah. wasn't, wasn't seeking out. It wasn't until way, you know, it's so funny. And what motivated me was like to prove a point. So funny. What, what drove me to first start reading was to like, prove that I could read the books that the CEO was reading. It was like such a stupid- And then you had a discovery there. And yeah, then I had a discovery of like, oh, I actually like this type of stuff to read, but I didn't find that till like 25. My dude. mom did a yeah. good job of fostering that because uh, she saw that when I was young, I don't know how old I was, I was probably third grade. You know, you have the school library and then they'll let you check out books. I would check out these sci-fi books mm -hmm. and she saw that I liked this and she, I've told you guys this before, she subscribed to Omni magazine, which is like this adult- sci-fi futuristic magazine. I don't understand half of what was in there, yeah. but I would try and I would read it every single time. And then she saw that I liked to read like facts. I loved reading facts. <clears throat> I was just into it. So then she bought a whole encyclopedia set and then I would read the encyclopedia because I just enjoyed doing it. So she did a really good job with that and it created a good relationship. But just think about how shitty, how many kids grow up thinking you know. They don't like something or it's not for me simply because it was a bad relationship that they had as a kid. Now, do you guys, okay, now do you both, because I think about this a lot as a dad now, right? And I know you guys are much older, wiser dads now than what you probably would say you were when you were in your late 20s yeah, or whatever. I right. I think you both would agree on that, right? So did you guys have the wherewithal to see the things that your kids were into when they were young and then go like, oh, I need to foster that. Even if it wasn't something you weren't into, right? Like I know that the, the, one of the things they say is like the, a secret hack, right? It, and a mistake a lot of parents make is they try and impose like me trying to make my son a basketball player. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As much as I talk about that, I know better than that, right? right? Like I have to look at, oh, he's into reading or, oh, mm -hmm. he's into Legos. Like how do I double, triple down on the things that he's interested yeah. in. Not only does that foster our relationship, but then maybe that's something he finds a passion for and he ends mm -hmm. up being very talented or good. Did you guys know to do that or foster that or did that come later? Thankfully, I knew that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things I did wrong in my 20s as a father, but that one I knew. That one, if I saw my kids into something, I would find a way to make it positive, constructive. You know, like if they were into trains, then I'd buy books on trains and buy train toys and tracks and have them build them. Mm -hmm. Like, that I knew. There's a lot I didn't know though. So I'm not, yeah, we I'm not got tooting them, my horn. Yeah, we got them into reading real real early. And that was something that uh, I wish I would, again, to your point, like I, I wasn't a big reader either. Wish I was at the time. Um, but that was something that we found like the different genres and we tried a lot, a lot of different options with them when they're real young just to see kind of like what sparked something. And then too, with the, like the Legos and all that of like the creativity side of it, I would spent a lot of time with them just one-on-one -on -one and then um, building and just exploring like the creative side of that and then the music side of it and all that. But like the, the one hard part for me has been 
being real reserved with the sports and the physical uh, pursuits and activities with that. It. So, cause I just really wanted that. Like that was like what I was most excited was to like throw a baseball to my kids and like have that kind of interaction. And, and we're just literally now getting to that point. So we, I even had this same conversation last night. We we're going to a restaurant and uh, we were talking about this because they're right now kind of like, we love gymnastics, but we're like, we're done. <laughs> you know, like both, and it was start out with Ethan because he's older and it's like, he's, he's taller now. And it's like, I think there's kind of a cap to that sport just because of like, you know, the abilities and things you can do, like what his level now like requires is for him to jump so high up. And it's like, he's really like, it's, it's nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, at that point where he, he has to like be frightened every time he's at practice and doing this. And oh, he's just wow. like, I don't know this is for me. And I'm just yeah. like, that's totally fair. Right. You know, uh, you've Put proven to dude. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing. It's like our deal with them is that they have to have something that they're actively involved in. that They train for on a consistent basis, like a couple days a week and you don't get any season off. And so the, the point of that is like gymnastics is year round. So we're going to be going from one thing to the next. And literally just from my experience, and this is my own personal experience of me and my brother, we had to have something. Otherwise I was going to get into some shit and yeah. I was going to, you know, go hang out with those other kids that were doing whatever the hell, you know, uh, but being busy and being disciplined and being focused uh, physically really helped me. So that's just something that uh, we're going to make sure that is a standard. Now, is that a, is that a, um, is that a hard thing for, to, to, or is it, is it is easy conversation? Like the boys like, okay, cool. I'm down dad. Or are they like, no, I don't really want to. Well, they probably get to pick. Yeah. They get to pick. Yeah. But you got to think that some kids but are, I mean, don't want to do anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you think, yeah, I mean, how well you think you would have been able to do that with Domenico? Yeah, do you yeah. think you could have made him play sports year round? Uh, he did. He did. Uh, but I don't have, he did with school. But I hear what you're saying because there's always going to yeah. be that kids like I don't want to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Well, there'll right. be days like that. Yeah, they'll they'll balk at it and and want to just play video games and just be lazy and chill and yeah. you know. And I get that. Uh, and those are the days we have to have harder conversations. But it's you know that's that's the agreement. And so I do give them that choice is like of some bit of like a freedom in that. But it's still like this is the standard that we're just you know. It's in, so Jessica introduced me to this, um, and it's uh, it's actually pretty interesting. So she she told me about how. And uh, let me explain it this way. Maybe you'll, you guys will get it. Cause at first I didn't understand it, but I started getting it as I started thinking about adults. There's a lot of adults or uh, let's say people in their late teens who they think they like something. And then later they realize I only did that because it pleased my parents. Yeah. I only mm -hmm. did that because, and so then they have to kind of figure out like, what is it that I like and what do, so she's really good at like, okay, when the kids do something that, you are super excited about match their excitement. Don't make, cause what'll happen. Cause kids want to please you. Right. So otherwise what will happen is if you're super excited about this thing, if your kid only wants to please you, they'll do it just for you and never really discover their own passion uh, for what they're supposed to do, yeah. which I didn't, I never got that. I don't understand. I understood the whole, like, let yeah. them do their thing, but I was always like, yay about everything. Yeah. But then what happens is your kid's like, Oh, I want to please dad. I want to make him do that all the time. And, and meanwhile, they don't, do what they think is best for them or they don't learn to do things because of intrinsic uh, motivation rather I, it's extrinsic. I wonder if that could have a, a, a reverse effect to, on some kids too though. Like if, if I was a, a dad who it's very natural to want to please your, your kid mm -hmm. or please your parent yeah. and you had this even kill response to everything that I did, then I might feel like I'm like always like, sir, what, what is dad? No, you want to match their excitement. So let's say your kid right. comes to you and is like, dad, look at my painting. Wow, yeah. that's really awesome, right? Yeah. Or they're like, you know, they put their painting up. And instead of being like, wow, you know, you'd be like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. looks like you, you really worked hard on it. Yeah, yeah. So that's, because that, I say, that was the same thing for me. I'm like, yeah. well, what's my kid think? I don't like anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Right, right. I'm um, going to show him. I'm excited too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I, would, I was like, you would want to show. Yeah, you don't want, then you're like, my dad doesn't like anything. Yeah. He's like, what a jerk, <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, speaking of books, I got to tell you guys, I was reading um, some old fitness and health tips from some of the godfathers of fitness. Oh, you will oh, I saw you. I'm glad you're bringing this up. Bro, yeah. you will not believe I told some of the stuff that they, that I, so Vince Garanda is okay. a bodybuilder from 
the 50s and 60s, okay? So this is like the, eh, I guess you could call it pre-golden era or maybe golden era of bodybuilding. Maybe one of the most respected bodybuilder guys in that time, right? He was like one of the first like science, like they would consider him science-based bodybuilders who kind of like said, no, this got to be this way and do this and this is why. He preached against cardio for fat loss. <gasps> yeah. He's, dun, he dun, he dun, literally dun. said uh, for conditioning, for endurance, totally fine. Do not do it for fat loss. Here was his reasoning. Remember, this was in the 60s. Nobody understood Wisdom. any of this stuff. This is what he said. If you do cardio for fat loss, like if that's your goal with the cardio, you run the risk of losing muscle, which will then slow down your metabolism. That How crazy is that? This guy was saying so, that so yeah. great. back then. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Then Jack LaLanne, who is one of my absolute- This is one I told a few people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some of the stuff that he, that he said is just so- um, it's so it's so incredible what he said. These are some of his. Well, quotes. it's profound considering that they came up with that without having all this crazy research and studies that we have today, right? So mm -hmm. today we have all these controlled studies where we can lean on and say, "Well, see, this is what the science says." But these guys had pieces together yeah. through just now. Jack Lalane was he was on TV at the time. He had remember I actually had a client trip off this. I had a client in her eighties, and she used to watch. Uh, Jack Lane exercise like videos. Yeah, and he would do this this workout. Him and his wife, I remember their warm up was a trip. Yeah, bro, he would wear these like they look like dance slippers, and he uh -huh. would use a chair and demonstrate exercises with the chair. Yeah, with his like kicking his leg out and doing the stuff, and he'd teach on TV like way ahead of his time. Yeah. So a lot of his stuff was like slogans and things because he was really good at like selling people on the idea. Yeah. Of working out, uh, one of my favorite ones that he said was, "People don't die of old age; they die of inactivity." Yep, so good. I so, love that that's one. That's a great quote. Yes, I love that one. So good. He, he, he said a lot of things like, um, this one's famous, exercise is king, nutrition is queen, put them together, and you've got a kingdom. I mean, better to wear out than rust out. I mean, these are great slogans, I think, that communicate the message so effectively. Yeah, yeah. That was from- uh, Didn't he know. have one about eating too? Was it him that you read? I thought you read one yesterday about like the, like food choices or eating like that. I thought was really good too. Um, let's see. Your health account is like your bank account. The more you put in, the more you can take out. Is that, oh, oh, if it tastes good, spit it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one there. So like he understood the potential, you know, challenges of palatability. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like right. if it's and so if it's engineered to be palatable, yes. like how much you will, your if body man, will be hijacked. If man makes it, don't eat it. That was the other one that he said. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. No. Isn't that great? Is Speaking great. of old stuff, I got to ask you this, Doug. I looked, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Great, great segue. segue. Yeah, great segue. My bad. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. How was Moses as a child? No, I'm yeah. So, um, have you ever heard of, and the reason why I'm asking this is Japanese. I know you know a lot about Japanese culture. It's called uh, Nurimitsu Odachi. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Never heard of You never him. heard of that? No, no Dude, Nurimitsu gotta, Odachi. So Justin, you would like this, actually. All right. So I was- Never for me. Uh, well, no, I mean, never you, I don't me. think you'll find it. You don't care about this kind of stuff. Yeah. You might think it's cool. You're not as much of a nerd. Yeah, so is. this is a 15th century Japanese sword. All right, no big deal. Like, what's the big deal about it? Well, first off, swords made back then were used in battle. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. consider that. It wasn't like they made them- Killed just, people. They used them in battle. Yeah. So this is 15th century. So this is a long time ago. It was over 12 feet long and it weighed almost 32 pounds. What? And they don't, the, 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 the controversy or the, or like the, the mystery around it is feet? who the hell yeah. was wielding. Who's, who's swinging that bad boy? Who was wielding the sword? A giant. And so the, the, they're like, it was, what is it? A giant? Yeah. Was it like the Definitely. super strong? Yeah. See, yeah. it's a giant. Yeah. It's a <laughs> it giant the, samurai. Dude. Anunnaki. Yeah. How, 12 feet long? You know how big that is? Yeah, that's taller than the yeah. ceiling, bro. Yeah. That's weird. No, it's, yeah. the, it's the Nephilim, Sal. The Nephilim. Yeah. yeah, dude. How crazy is that? Well, what doesn't make sense about that is like, if it's a 12-foot sword, imagine how tall the person has to be to, to even wield it. That has to be like- I mean, yeah, was that- do they know for sure it was used? Because like, or is it just like yes. you know, one of those things where you're like, oh, they look, know it was look what used. I built. They can prove it was used. You didn't make swords back then to not get used. Look at the size. Of well, it. I mean, that might be the proof that they did make swords not to be always. I mean, used. maybe <laughs> like they had just some competition. Yeah, who you could know, make the biggest back, sword? Know, why would they make one so look so big? I uh, mean, asking that question is like asking a question. I don't know. Of why that's kind of like one of those. so Odachi. O, uh, the Odachis were long swords, but they would reach like five feet, six feet, and those were used in battle all yeah. the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, but this one is, you know- I would like feet. to think it was a giant, but like more than likely, it was probably for like a display 
you know, piece or something. Mm-hmm. Kind of, only reason, because that, that same argument was used a lot for like some of those cave painting drawings or like, a, let's say you go into Egyptian culture and you see like one with a scarab face and it's like, they only, they only drew what they saw. <laughs> mm. <It's> like, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> had no imagination. Like that's their entire argument. Yeah, right. yeah, well, like, I know. so the, uh, the counter. It's like, so funny, right? Uh, but with the, with the counter like <laughs> argument is that maybe it was made uh, like as a flag, like they used it as a way to like, yeah. this is our army. Right. Like this, this is our main piece. Oh, okay. That, that's that, kind of cool. That, yeah. I can see like you're getting ready to try and you have this huge yeah. 12 foot sword that. that you see. You yeah. Know? But isn't that crazy? Carry like, like one guy carrying like, ah, like, those yeah. guys were like somebody, some swordsmith hammered out that ma- it's all one, one blade. It's and all it one sh- piece of metal. It's sharp and everything. Like it's I don't know legit or if it is now, oh, it's like a big yeah. old blunt blade. Yeah. So I knew Doug would be interested in it. Yeah. Very interesting. Isn't badass, that dude, it's badass. That is so cool. Right. Do you have sword envy? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'd put a sword <laughs> like that. He's all like, oh. yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long sword. Like, oh, my little, I ain't the one with a lifted truck. Sword. <laughs> yeah, I, got the, I got this tiny one behind me. Jeez. Hey, listen. Sword it kills so people just as good. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, it's not about the size, Doug. Yeah, okay, it's, it's all about how it's used. It's about what you, you do it. with it. Okay? Yeah, it'll yeah. still kill people. Yeah. <laughs> So um, the, I haven't told you guys this, but I've been experimenting with something for sleep that I, I see people write about, post about, and uh, I finally tried it. My cousin's wife introduced me to it. There's no sponsor, no connection, but I just want to talk about it because I've been using it. She, We all went up to Truckee together um, to hang out, and, and we're all ready to go to bed. And she's like, Sal, have you tried mouth tape? I'm like, I thought she was joking. Like, you, know, I'm shut up. <laughs> yeah. like, you were just like having some like story. Yeah, to tell like, oh, Have you ever am tried mouth tape? Yeah. Am I doing that again? Yeah. No, no, no. She's like, you wear it, you know, on your lips when you go to sleep. And she's like, so she has an aura ring that measures the quality of your sleep. Yeah. Significant improvement from wearing the mouth, the mouth tape. Yeah, she, uh-huh. was, she was showing me the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started wearing it. And yeah, dude, I, can, I don't, I don't measure anything with an aura, but I can tell it makes a big difference. So I want you to pair it with the, the nasal. I just so, ordered some. So I actually have been doing that long before Alex Hormozzi was part of why I don't even talk about it is because he's made it like such a thing to do. He like, wears it on interviews and stuff. What I've, are you doing? I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, you would have knowing he his might as mar- well wear eye black. Well, knowing too. his, his, <laughs> his marketing genius is it's, you know, people to be memorable, you know? So yeah. it's like the guy know, with the nose tape. Exactly. Like you, like that was, is something that you can't that help it. But, but so I would not be surprised surprised if there is a, a method to his madness when it comes to it. But mm. for sure, I, I wear that every, almost every night. And if I don't wear it every night, it's because I forgot to put it on. Because if I don't, if I have any sort of congestion in my nose, I'll mouth breathe and sleep and, and then I snore, right? But Whereas, why don't you combine it with the tape? Well, that's um, why well, I'm telling you to for sure do it. I can notice that I, I won't mouth breathe. I'll breathe through the nose if it just opens this up. So I'm wondering if you notice just from that, you won't have to tape your mouth shut and you might actually get the same. How how freaked out were you the first time though? That I put it on? Yeah. Like when you're sleeping and you're, you Uh, know, I I don't don't know. know. That might give me a little anxiety. Maybe, but you know what, you know what else is the benefit, right? Let's Hmm. say, you know, you know, those like midnight, bumps you get from the wife. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking. Of, I thought you were going to go the ghost route. Yeah. Can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> I got the mouth tape on. Sorry. We got to sleep. <laughs> Katrina, actually, she's, so this, she's going to be mad. I brought this up, but she hates when I put that, that nose thing on because she thinks that that means we're not having sex for sure. It's like, honey, <laughs> why, I, bro, uh, you perform it so That's, I that's, that's your like, version of the sweatpants. I told her, like, I don't know yeah. why you think that. Maybe because you're not attracted to it, so you don't yeah, feel like it. Like, it ain't nice. stopping me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she's, uh, she I got better endurance. You know what it is is because she thinks that I'm so focused on getting a good night's sleep, I'm not thinking about that. Uh-huh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I'm thinking about that, I'm not thinking about all the other stuff to get optimized sleep. I'm thinking about that. Show her the on funny. Funny. Performance. I know. I know. Hey, so I think she's just like, oh, so we're not having sex tonight? It's like, <laughs> oh, I could put my nose guard on and still go to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> calm down. She doesn't want to look at you, bro. Yeah, that's that's what I think it is. I think she's like, I just don't look attractive with it on. It's not, it's not very cool. You know, you know, she should get you back, put it on too while you guys have sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, still want to I don't give a shit. Go I'll put my it. headband okay. on too. Let's hey, go. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey stop with me. You know what do, are, is there a sign? Do you guys? Is there a sign that you know, like you're like, oh, my wife can have once have sex with me. Is there something that she does that? Oh, hundred percent. 
Yeah. Uh, I can tell by she what she picks she's up things to bed. on the ground a lot. What? <laughs> What'd you say she put do on the picks ground? Picks up things on the ground. It's like, it's like excessive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. She's like Whoops. clearing the space. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, just some door over, over here. Over. Uh, I was like, uh, what is she like clearing clearing yeah, the room yeah. out? So it's like, like we need all the all of a sudden all the everything on the ground like matters. You know? <laughs> I'm just like, huh? I just stop dead in the tracks yeah. every time. No, no, no. I could tell. I could tell by shower time and outfit. I mean, that's it. It's like it's you know it's game time. If she's like, yeah, yeah. she goes, oh, make, eyeshadow. She yeah. makes an effort to get up to this, up to the bedroom to and take, get, a shower? Yeah, take a shower, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then put like a little nighty or t-shirt, cute thing Dude, on. Dude, Jessica like, was confused like, the other night because she, because she, she's like, oh, I got to go take a shower. First of all, she's making time at night to take a shower. Usually, that means like, oh, cool, we're gonna, it's gonna happen, right? So she's like, gonna go take a shower, and then I'm like, oh, I got to take a shower too. She's like, oh, you know, we could just we could shower together. Now, what does that mean to you guys? Let me ask you this: If your wife. <laughs> Says to you, hey, let's go take a shower together. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? Does not it's mean like to shower. You probably have some stunk. It means maybe, we maybe, no, no. <laughs> maybe we'll get around to watching yeah, yeah, each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. She, she was like, bl you know, she was like blown away. That that's what I thought. I'm like, wait, you thought you really just want to take a shower? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we're just gonna wash yeah, ourselves. Like, like, you know what? It sucks. You have all the water. I'm not getting any water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's never like convenient. Plus, how can you explain like how is that even possible? Like, we're you're naked. There's soap everywhere. Like for sure. You know what? I still I'm out, gonna try. Of yeah, all the houses hands. I've lived in, that is actually a, a, a box I haven't checked. I and I've been in obviously showers like this, but I have not had been in a home where I lived in where you have the the tool heads, the or whatever. dual head, oh, and yeah, the shower. Yeah. Like that's like a uh, if I'm building my custom home, we got one of those. Actually. Oh, you it have helps, one of those? Yeah, it helps. And, and really, honestly, the benefit of it is washing the dog. <laughs> we really don't use it for no, sexual dude. stuff. No, bro. I'm don't sorry. Kill, don't kill my dreams. Dude. It's not as cool don't as you thought. Something. I thought it was gonna be cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah dude. Like, like, we're for washing the dog. It's gonna get weird. Yeah, let's, let's go. No, just uh, washing the dog. Dude, you're killing it for yeah. me. Sorry, sorry to be that guy. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what else? My sucks? bad. I gotta bring this up. You know what else mm. that sucks? Mm. So you know, um, I, I would say each of us has a unique talent or ability Doug it's hot and as fuck out, in here, bro. yeah it's really it hot is, Doug. Yeah, turn up that AC we are sweating. My back. sweating hot. yeah we're sweating really hot yeah. sorry uh, that, uh, that you know each of us has I would say a unique talent and uh, you know I've called Adam the deal maker because he's really good so he handles our sponsorships and he makes deals right he makes deals and they, and they tend to work out but boy yeah. would I fucking hate to be on the other end yeah. of that deal <laughs> I listen to this guy on the phone <laughs> or you see it it's like god bro <laughs> you're I, you hard. Know, my wife. My wife says hard. My, one of the few compliments she gives me is that you know I, I have this ability to be a likable asshole. That's what she says. Like so, wow, that is accurate. Like mm -hmm. she's like yeah, you know, and, and you know, and you guys obviously you guys have an, a, an an intimate knowledge of what my uncle is like, right? So he would just yeah. be an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. There's, without There's the, just the likable without part. the likable Some, part, right? So just I like asshole, him. But. So we we have that. <laughs> so we both have that side to us. But Katrina's like, and I, it never fails. Like I, I hear the way you say something to somebody. And I'm like, oh my God, like they're going to hate his guts. And then she's like, I talked to him after him and they love you. It's like, I don't understand. It doesn't Bro, make it's sense. It's because you're me. so honest. Like you're That's, the, one of the most honest, like upfront, like here's the deal. And it's like, you can't really, what are you going to say to that? That's how I, that's how I feel, Justin. I yeah. feel like really what it is, is really I remember the first time I heard someone say the term radical honesty and it really resonated with that. And I, it wouldn't been, hadn't been something I'd heard before. And I went, I really feel like that is, and it's really actually difficult. Like everyone says they're honest. Sure. But like they're honest to a point. You're mm -hmm. honest to like a, like when it's convenient. Yeah, yeah. When it's convenient or when it's not hard, right. When it's, when it's hard to be honest, yeah. we tend to, you know, kind of pussyfoot around what you really want sure. to say or the full truth because you don't want to hurt their feelings or you're intimidated to say what you want to say. And I've just learned in my life that the more the more I practice that radical honesty, the more it served me and the the more comfortable I've become with being that because most good people, there's always assholes and people that reject it or are uncomfortable. Well, you're not going to like a liar. That's the bottom line. That's right. If someone's mm -hmm. fake. But I don't think that's what makes you likable. I think that's what gives you respect. I think honesty uh, is what makes people respect you. You're likable, and I don't understand. I, I can't explain exactly what that formula looks like. We could list a bunch of you know things that make someone likable. 
but there's just something about you that's likable. You, you people respect you because you're honest, but I don't think that's what makes you likable. I think if you maybe they not have the other side. If you didn't have the other qualities, they would just respect you, but they like fuck that guy. You know, he's an asshole, but, uh, but yeah, you are, that's actually a very accurate description. Yeah, definitely. Well, likeable asshole. Yeah, 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 it's, a, it's a, it's an interesting compliment. <laughs> right? a likable asshole. Uh, I mean, I think there's also, you guys here. get to see, you know, or in some of these people do too, is that, uh, as much as I can be that side, which, you know, gives the shock and awe sometimes, then I have another side to me that I think I'm, I, I like to think I'm pretty sensitive and no, empathetic you're not, you're and no, no, you're caring. Good, yeah. And yeah. I think about yeah. other people yeah, and like yeah, yeah. part, of, and then here's another thing too, like one of the secrets to our success with our partners in our relationship is like, I take those relationships very seriously. And I think about those people and I do, uh, I do my best to let them know that I care and what to, and to do things and go above and beyond. Look, like, bottom line is, and, and this is uh, saying this is easy. Doing it's hard, right? But, uh, the bottom line is, um, you, you know what to ask for and you know what you can deliver period. So a lot of people don't know that. And if they do, they're afraid to, they're afraid to ask for this much for a raise or because they're not confident with what they're worth or they overshoot it yeah. and then they don't deliver it, and then nobody's going to, so you're very good at knowing exactly, you know, what, what we're worth, what we're going to deliver. And then we do. And so that's the deal. That's the part of the deal maker that I think is uh, is so brilliant. Yeah, I think I think there's a and lot. That's what makes it tough for the other side because I don't think that people are used to dealing with that. I think people are used to people, you know, like I'm worth this much, but I'll ask yeah. this much because that's too much. I don't want to ask more. Than I, that. I also think that you get um, you get a lot of latitude with people when it's like one of my favorite quotes, right? Um, Nobody cares how much you know till they know how much you care. And if you lead with that first, I like to think that I have that relationship with my staff. Like I like to think that. I have built enough of a relationship, say, with Andrew, that if I came in and like really railed on him hard, it really like I feel like I've built enough credit with him of consistency of showing the other side of me that I can push those areas and sure. be okay. And it's out of it's not out of character or it's out of character to see me go ha that hard. And so the same thing applies in business when I'm negotiating deals like that. It's like if I've shown all these things to show you that I care and that and we have built this relationship and then all of a sudden it comes down to negotiation and I'm stern and I'm direct and I'm this like that, like I feel like, and even if I come sometimes come off a little harsh or hard, like some people might take it, I get a little bit more latitude because I've put that work of in course. and I've earned that. And of I don't course. think if I, I think if I hadn't done those things, that I can't, because I can't, I know what I can do with what people I can do it with too. There's certain people I can't do that with. If I haven't built a relationship with it, like sometimes the conversation you guys hear, you guys hear that with somebody who I've, I've, I've built a good relationship with. So I can say some shit that yeah. sounds kind of yeah. crazy, yeah. but it's because we've already, we've already you formed that You can get beyond the surface kind of talking. My favorite get is, to, it, my get favorite to the heart is to, of it. Uh, listen to you uh, negotiate with Mike Matthews. That is- Because <laughs> he's a cunt. Those are he two, is, two, <laughs> he that's why. Because he's as big of a cunt as oh, I am. Oh my and God. I His know two about rams him. like- He <laughs> may not know I know it about him, but I know it 100% oh, about him. it's fucking when we're, great, when we're And we both have a, a similar- And you guys love it. That's the thing is that you guys are both smiling while you're- Yeah, I think we both have a similar so strategy the way we're like we're like so nice to each other and then we let our other people be bring the bad news to each other and it's <laughs> yeah. like then we play the like oh i didn't know you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah right guy yeah weird yeah <laughs> this is a, you know, i'll take stuff. that as a compliment Dude, i'll take that as a it compliment. is right, oh, right, I, you brought up a kind of a cool thing i wanted to kind of like uh bring something up that i saw that was pretty funny and it's Again, this doesn't mean I believe in time travel or anything, so don't get all crazy. Just thought it was kind of <laughs> random and weird and, you know, worth looking at this and, and, and speculating tell. upon. So there's this guy, and maybe you can find this, Doug. It's, it's, I think they call him the time traveling hipster. Uh, and so there's actually like these old, like 20, 1920s kind of pictures where this guy was like, I think he was at some kind of, um, not soapbox derby or whatever the hell they, you know, had for racing cars back then. But, mm. um, he was there and he was wearing like sunglasses and like futuristic looking like outfit totally stood Looked out like compared to everybody. Yeah. Who was like somebody then. just like planted this hipster looking dude in with all of these like depression era people. And, and there's another one too, where this guy had like literally looks like a cell phone. 
and he's like hanging out I've like near this that bar, one. What? Uh, and it's and it's literally is in the Depression era, and it <laughs> makes you be like, wait a minute, is this photoshopped or is this? And so that would be my first thought is Photoshop, but then if it's real, it's a trip. I've seen that, so I don't know if you so can is, it, is it, it would it fall in the category of art? What is this? No, like, no, no, no. These are photos. These are real photos. I've seen some of these. These are photos, but the person looks like they're dressed and they're wearing. Yeah, things. expand that one that has a red mark on it. Yeah, though. and it looks like they're from today. And you're like, wait a minute, nobody dressed like that. Nobody. I've seen. I saw the one with the cell phone, and it does look like a phone. Yeah, which is kind of weird. Let's see. Oh, well, you can't uh, see yeah, anything on that. Hold on. I mean, I have it's it on like my phone. I can show you. Yeah, what's right here? This oh, guy yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. What? Like, yeah, that looks like an RVCA shirt, and like, yeah, look at his sunglasses. Nobody's wearing sunglasses for first of all. And his wow. haircut, like, what does he do with that haircut? He does look like a weird. That's weird. Well, doesn't that even almost look like an RVCA shirt? You know, yeah, it's like, like it looks like exactly. somebody. It looks like somebody uh, photoshopped in themselves into an old. Uh, it does. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, somebody I'm pretty doctored. sure that's what happened. Do you think so? I or, think, or, think so. Think it's real. No. Okay. What about the cell phone one? That one. I want it to be real. Yeah, the cell oh, phone I do one. too. But. That's so interesting. Yeah. Where did you find this? I you, don't know. I ran across some him and I him and I website have, and it we got have me. the same algorithm. You guys do have the same algorithm. Yeah. Sitting it's, stuff. It's too. fun. I don't. Why not? There, right. there's one. I feel yeah. left with the circle. Oh, this one here. Yeah, let me see. <clears throat> Click on that one. There's a few. That's not even the one I've seen. I, I don't even. Know. Oh wait, what are they doing there? Can you? Can that, you that looks like he's holding the phone. That's what it looks like he's holding a phone. But yeah, what would such a horrible picture? What would they be holding up to their ear like that? No idea. That's weird. Yeah. But, if, yeah. but I mean, think about it this way too. Like uh, spies, right? They've always had like access to stuff oh. that nobody else did. You think it was like technology? Uh, that one looks like, see that one the night to go up, Doug, the 1917 guy in like like old mining yeah. picture. And then look at, he's wearing like a, he looks like a hipster. with Look at his hair. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. even still like, uh, yeah, that, that's my thought process is that. What if um, he was just a weird dude back then? Yeah. Oh, fucking John. I mean, that's like, actually, that's if it's a, tr a true photo, it's probably most likely what it is. Just somebody, it's not like we don't see people nowadays that look like they're, they're dressed out of their time zone. They're all over the place now. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, that's uh, anyway, oh, there's a cell phone thought... one. Like, what, like oh, yeah. it looks like he's taking a picture with the cell phone. Yeah. That guy right there. Yeah. Yeah. What's he doing? Oh, wow. Wow. Right there. The oh, guy. Oh. Yeah. It looks like a freaking iPhone. Yeah. This looks like an iPhone. Let's scroll down. There's a bigger, better picture. Like, oh, and there's one right there. That they circled. What are they looking at there? He looks like he's taking a picture of his crotch. What's yeah, well, <laughs> first dick pic. Yeah, and there's another one. <laughs> yeah. Looks like they're holding a cell phone. Yeah, I'm fun. telling you I think you guys, those are regular man. cameras. These yeah. are the- uh, It's a box camera. Oh, is it? That's yeah. not closed. Yeah. I'm not closed. Sorry. It's like, it's not I hate to rain on your parade. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Damn it. I thought it was cool. Damn it. We thought we almost proved time traveling right there. Yeah. yeah. So, almost existed. So close. What's the- uh, Do we have a page we'd like to shout out today? Did we not? Did you uh, talk about the um, Organifi's new product? I, we have not. Oh, we shit. Almost forgot. Oh, my and God. I can't are, believe I almost forgot. I need to talk about this. I don't yeah. even know if they're going to be selling You're this. You're the most hyped. Uh, so I don't these. know if they're going to be selling this by the time this comes out, but I got to talk about it. Oh, they are. So, they are selling it now. They are. Oh, they are. I'm, okay. I'm from the past telling you in the future. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Doug's been okay. hip since uh, the 1900s. Okay. So I got this package because they, they send us their new stuff. And I, was, I haven't been this excited about uh, a partner's product in a long time. So Shilajit is a Ayurvedic compound that's been used for a long time. And it's, it's, okay, so let me explain what it is, right? So the it's found in the Himalayas. It's like a black, oozy substance. And really what it is, it's the product of these ancient forests being compressed in the mountains and decayed over time. And that's what produces this, uh, what's called Shilajit. Uh -huh. Sounds like, what the hell is that? What's that gonna do? Well, anyway, they've been using it for a long time in Ayurvedic medicine. Here's why I get excited about it. Shilajit has a lot of studies, a lot of real studies supporting its benefits. I'll so read to you something. This is all is like, it like this an adaptogen? What is it used for? Yes, okay. it is like an adaptogen. Okay. But I'm going to read to you this some like of the, the topsoil stuff where it's like, you, you know, we're missing all these nutrients because of what gets stripped out of, um, you know, the soil. So there's a few things that are in there that we know have benefits like fulvic acid, yeah. there's antioxidants, but it's one of those things where we're like, we're not quite sure, right? So, by the way, this is a five, they've been using this for 5,000 years wow. in medicine. Wow. Okay. So that's a long time, right? Hmm. So um, it's a tar like substance found in the Himalayan and Tibet mountains. So, as the lush forests were compacted, as mountains arose, Shilajit was formed. And when the temperatures rise around these Indian mountains, 
The tar-like medical miracle substance, what they refer to it, comes from the crevices within the mountains. I don't know who the first person decided to eat this was. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just, Let me try uh, this black uh, oozy stuff. We have this, rock climbing. There's, ooh, this, this is uh, one of the oldest form. One of the oldest forms of medicine, right? Sanskrit texts that date over three thousand years ago talk about using. Okay, it. so explain what it's most. Oh, Al Alzheimer's. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them up. So, Low testosterone. Oh yeah. Listen. Wow. Listen. So for thousands of years, wow. it was used as an aphrodisiac. For huh. thousands of years, it was like give this to men to help fertility. Okay, well, here's what some of the studies show. First off, studies show that it provides energy and revitalization. So studies show that people take it, they get more ATP production. They actually show this, producing more ATP in the mitochondria. It promotes brain health. Again, this was shown in studies. This is not just now what the Ayurvedic uh, practitioners say. Regulates hormones and immune system. It raises testosterone in men with low testosterone. In females, it's, it helps with ovulation. So it's wow. fertility for both. Hmm. It reduces pain. It lowers blood sugar. It prevents cancer. It fights inflammation. Uh, there's some studies. So there was a study that showed that the supplement in, improved the function and regeneration of skeletal muscle. Bro, so aging, recovery supplement. Aging, heart health. Yes. Iron deficiency, anemia. Yeah. So this is one of the wow. few, like, you know, out there things. High that, altitude sickness. But, you know, li listen, there's a couple old episodes Secret where I brought this ooze. up. Because. Um, Did you? Yes, I brought this up before. Because I've taken it before and I can tell. I can tell when I take it. So when I saw you know, Organifi, and I love Organifi because they get the best quality. Mm -hmm. Period. End of story. They get a form of Shilajit called Prima V, which makes, which is the like very pure form. And it's in gummies. So they're like really tasty little gummies. And they actually taste good, by they the way. They do taste mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So two of them is a dose. <laughs> we crushed that whole bag. You'll notice a difference. Okay, so I can't, I, and you know, I'm probably the, the probably the least, or the most skeptical of all of us. And I've been taking this since we ate the whole bag, right? So almost every day for the last couple of weeks. And I, I can't describe yet what it is, I, I, but I do feel good. Yeah. So, but I can't describe it yet. Okay. I haven't figured it out yet. Take it consistently and you'll notice... Uh, Kind of like um, ashwagandha, but different. So it's you'll notice better recovery, better energy, um, less soreness. Um, and again, like I said, in studies, they've shown uh, testosterone levels getting affected. Sperm count goes up. All right. Giving it to men, they see hey, more sperm. Why'd you look at me like that? I don't know. <laughs> or you're just there. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, cool. You're, you're, anyway, according yeah, to your so last glad, sample. Hey, yeah. Thank you so much for reminding me. I, like, I'm really excited about this. I think this will, this is uh, one of the best providers of Shilajit uh, that I know of now that Organifi has it. So yeah, no, I'm, yeah, we're, we're I'm pumped good. to see how they do. All right. So now shout out, Justin, you got a book you've been reading? Yeah. So this was actually recommended by somebody in my DMs and they were like, oh, this totally has you written all over it. Dungeon Crawler Carl. I believe it's <laughs> and it's like, it's wow. so like it, the premise of it is so ridiculous. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's going to be a wild ride. I'll have to let you guys know how it ends up, but it's like, it's sci-fi. It's, it's funny. It's like, he's, he's kind of the center of this like universal, like game show that he gets dropped into. And, uh, anyways, it's, it, the premise of it is really silly, but like the dialogue so far is hilarious. Oh, cool. Love it. When it comes to quality, integrity, and effectiveness, Legion is one of the best companies for sports performance supplements you'll find anywhere. Their pre-workout, Pulse, is one of the top selling on Amazon. Go check them out. Go to buylegion.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. And if you're a first time customer, you'll get 20% off. For returning customers, you'll get more rewards points. All right, back to the show. First question is from Preacherman Joe. How do you fix back issues at work from sitting all day? back issues from work, from sitting all day. This was a majority of our clients, right? Yeah. Because we all worked in Silicon Valley. And so. Oh, it adds up. This was all, yeah. In that fixed position for so I, I think that I think the biggest misconception around this is thinking that it's like something directly related to the back. And more often than not, it's more like hip, hip. and ab stuff related. Correct. Pelvic, 100%. Yeah. And that was, the, that was like, I mean, I remember even being a trainer and, and dealing with low back pain and thinking that, oh man, just, you know, genetically our families all have bad backs, have a bad back or whatever. And yeah. not realizing 
how much of that had to do with weak hips yeah. uh, and a weak core that was really contributing to the low back pain. The most common areas of tension in the back uh, for people who work at desk jobs are low back and then uh, that upper kind of neck area or you know mm -hmm. back area where you start to get tension in the back of the, uh, the head or the neck. And yes, it's because you're sitting in a position for a long period of time. And what happens is, you know, the, the, the muscles of the body have to work uh, together. And when some muscles are too weak, what ends up happening is your body just has other muscles do more work to compensate. And in this case, if your core is weak because it's not really being activated, well, you have hip flexors like the psoas muscle that attaches at the low spine. That's going to be pulling a little more. It's going to cause low back pain. You may have some uh, weakness in the hips, like Adam was saying, uh, that's going to cause uh, some low back issues. You may have weakness in the mid back. Uh, so your upper back muscles, the levitator scapulae or trapezius muscles are going to be tighter to try to stabilize the shoulders. So what you want to do is you want to strengthen those muscles that are weak. Mm -hmm. um, so strengthening your core um, is important. St working on hip mobility and strength is very important. And mid back uh, exercise are important, but I will say this, I'm going to back up because those are all now it's important to do strength training regardless. Okay. But I think if we look at the root issue, the root issue is that you're sitting all day. And, and so it's actually, and I've had a lot of clients with success, uh, with having standing desks where rather than sitting all day, they stand while they do their work or they sit on something that requires a little bit yeah. more or they get up and more frequently. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm not saying don't strength train, like just do that. But if, rather than having to try to always constantly band aid or, or compensate or work on areas that um, need strengthening because you're doing something all the time, well, you change what you do a little bit uh, like stability ball uh, for a chair tends to help um, this problem. And so does standing. And like I said, those two things I've had people work on made a big difference. And didn't, who was one of us, was it you, Adam, that tried to create a chair? Yeah. Yeah. At one point. Uh -huh. Yeah. For that very thing, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. keep, keep them, it had a, the, sh the shaft in the, the chair had a 15 degree play in all directions. So you could never sit and slouch or else it would tip over. Mm -hmm. So it kind of forced you. And then the, the seat was actually at like a 30 degree angle. So you weren't exactly at a 90 degree angle or I don't know what that is, a 45 degree angle. I yeah, say. that actually like uh, Dr. Ed Thomas had added like a wedge to a lot of students' yeah. uh, chairs for that specific reason too, is like, you know, not having that 90 degree fixed and then having it like at least a bit more lengthened mm -hmm. tended to, yeah, avoid a lot of those pains. Do you know that they on. have uh, chairs? And it's funny because I, when I saw it, I thought what we would think as trainers, like, oh, that's good for some core activation, but they have chairs for kids uh, with ADD in classrooms where the bottom of them, it's, it's like, like almost like them every now and then. No. <laughs> it's, not, it's just because I annoy you. Yeah. They, they have uh, the bottom of it looks like a half circle. So it kind of rolls around. And so mm. the kids will sit and because they need that kind of stimuli, uh -huh. but I'm like, that would be a good office chair. Yeah. An inexpensive way to get some. They've made it. ones too that like are, where a stability ball fits in them now. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I was all into that when we first were, were trying to do it. We just had horrible timing when we, we created it right after the big crash and then going to uh, big companies like Deloitte and Touche and trying to convince them to replace their, 500 office chairs with one that was five times ask. more expensive yeah. than the one that they already currently had. They're like, yeah, that's cool. We're, we'll pass. So I'm going to, I'm going to give some specific exercises. So cool. I like, that way. I like planks, uh, but planks done a specific way. Active, I actually did a video active planks. Yeah, yeah. Active planks or planks with, like the, that tailbone with the tailbone tuck to activate the core. Um, and we, I did videos on this a while ago. Um, so we'll, we'll link those in the show notes. Um, and then rows, cable rows, machine rows are good because they're easier for people with weak mid backs to activate versus a barbell row, which you got to have a little bit more control and strength to do and really focusing on pulling the shoulder blades back and down. Those two, you know, movements generally are pretty good uh, prescriptions for people. I, yeah, I had issues. some generic advice along those lines. I, I was going to go the active plank route. So uh, I love that. I love row, which I was going to say also, and then good goals, get good at the deadlift get great at the 90 90s and work towards having a good deep squat. Mm -hmm. I think those would be really good goals for somebody who struggles with that. Um, I can't stress enough. Like this was something that I, I was riddled with low back pain, chronic back pain. And for all my, even my career as a trainer, 
And it wasn't until I got really good at my 9090s to where I and ankle mobility to where I could get into a really good deep squat and just getting good at and, and getting connected uh, to that internal rotation with the 9090s on my hips and then also doing a deep squat kind of strengthens all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So once you get to a place where you can do a good deep squat, now I find I don't have to do any of those movements anymore. I don't have to do any of that yeah. stuff. All I have to do is squat deep yeah. once a week and that strengthens that entire complex hip complex so well that I've it completely eliminated any low back pain I used to have. Next question is from RSG Conference. My wife and I are expecting our first child in seven months. How should I train and eat now to set me up for a successful first year of being a father? Um, <clears throat> this is a lot of things that'll, that'll make you a successful uh, father, but <laughs> I think they're obviously talking about in regards to their physical fitness and health. Muscle is extremely protective. Okay. It's very protective when you're sedentary. It's very protective when you lose sleep. It's very protective when you're under a lot of stress. Okay. All those things that I just mentioned are hard stresses in the body damaging. And, uh, you know, you're going to experience those uh, being a new father and having more muscle on your body is just going to mitigate. It's not going to completely protect you, but it's going to mitigate a lot of the damage um, from lack of sleep and more stress and, you know, and maybe diet not being ideal. So what you want to do is you want to go into it feeling strong yeah. and, and having a good amount of muscle. This doesn't mean go into it overtrained. I think some people take that right, advice. Right. Oh yeah. They and go think, super hard and intense. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta train for a competition right before I have my kid. Do not redline before you have a kid. Cause you're going to screw yourself. You also want to go into that, especially those first three months, uh, feeling healthy, well rested and recovered because it's going to, it's going to hammer you. So, um, so those are the two things I would say, build muscle, be strong and make sure you go into it feeling rested and recovered. And then that should help mitigate a lot of the damage. I mean, yeah, I think that's, I would have went consistency maps anabolic build as much muscle speeding that metabolism up. So increasing calories over time. Right. And, and build as much muscle through that program as I could. And then I would transition to like a maps 15 yeah. when the kid comes. Oh yeah. Um, I just think that program complements uh, mom and dad life so well and it's your most flexible option that you're going to yeah, have. Yeah. And if you did a really good job of taking Sal's advice and building as much muscle and strength going in, you'd be amazed how little you have to do to maintain that. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, you'll, you'd be able to build all that muscle from running anabolic. And then you go into, you know, uh, dad life and just running mass 15, you'd be surprised how much of all of that you still keep by just stimulating the muscle with two big lifts every day, you know? Yeah, really, you just got to look at it. Whatever you're putting in right now, consistency-wise and, like, focused uh, all of your attention towards uh, building muscle, th that's what's going to carry you into this. And so that's – it's, it's pr muscle preservation mode once we get to that place. And uh, MAPS 15 is going to help to kind of at least keep – that muscle signal alive and stimulated. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in extreme case, I mean, they have studies on um, people who are um, hospitalized with illness uh, or injury or like bedridden and muscle is very strongly coordinated to, uh, excuse me, correlated to successful outcomes because you're going to lose muscle and strength when you're bedridden. And that's an extreme case, right? You're, you're having a kid, you're not going to be in the hospital, but just to get use it as an example, it's so protective. Like one of the best things you could do going into a challenging, stressful position or situation is to have a buffer of muscle. But also I have to stress this because what a lot of people will, will, will do when they hear that is I got a red line up until the day the baby's born. No, no. You also want to be recovered and rested. So do this well within the range of what's appropriate for your body. Don't push yourself to the limit because then you're going to go. You're tip. not maximizing your build if you do that. Yeah. And also, right. But then you're going to tip over into your body can't handle it uh, when the baby comes. So right. um, if you just do those two things, you'll minimize the the potential damage. And then the bounce back will be real, real, uh, will be made real easy by doing that as well. Next question is from Jonathan Sash. What does it mean if I never feel hungry? I can go all day without eating and never feel hunger, even though I can tell I need to eat because my energy is low. 
This is an interesting one because... Did you ever feel this way as like a young kid, like when you were trying to build and stuff like that, like you didn't have much of an appetite or did you always have like a big appetite? I didn't have a big appetite, but I never had a no appetite. I, 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 I pushed my food intake because I was, you know, going crazy with trying to gain I, weight. I mean, but. I kind of struggled with this a bit once I started cutting out breakfast and was like deliberate about I, when I started the whole fasting thing. And for me, it was like it was it started to become too easy for me not to eat um, breakfast over like mm -hmm. a year or so. And then it was like, I just wasn't really interested in eating very often. I had to like start eating again and kind of, yeah. you know, get back in the rhythm of it to, to build an appetite again. So I agree. I agree. I've, I've definitely been here before. And I think it's really interesting how the body adapts, right? It's like, uh, you know, you may not remember what that, maybe you've been this way your whole life. And so you've never gone the other direction, but like, or like Justin's case where you've, you've transitioned into like, you know, meal skipping or whatever like that. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden the body adapts and then it's not a big deal anymore. Um, I had, I had to train myself to get an appetite to, to build and grow. Like I naturally could go all day and maybe eat once. Like I could, I just, it was, and I, I still have that. Like if I were to like incorporate intermittent fasting on a regular basis, I could easily go there, easily go there. In fact, there's periods in this, that we've had this podcast where I've gone, we're just two meals a day and I'm totally fine. And I can go on stretches like that, but it's really hard to build muscle like that. I mean, you just can't get enough calories and protein to do that and so sure it's okay for weight management but i don't i care about optimizing my health and building muscle See, i would need more information because lack of appetite or low appetite it's it, it can become an issue in certain circumstances but otherwise it's not like what you're talking about adam isn't a problem except for you had goals to pack on muscle right right, right. in other words it wasn't like you had a health issue so low appetite that's related to poor health or that becomes a problem. Well, that's usually based on some, something psychological, something, you know, some kind of mental distress or stress or dysfunction or poor health, hormonal yeah. health or gut health. Right. But if, if this is coming from someone who's like, Hey, my appetite isn't high enough for me to pack on muscle. Well, that, that then the strategy is completely different. So if it's due to dysfunction, well, we got to look at why you're, why you're opposed to eating. What is it about food that you're yeah. connecting? That could be underlying too. Like right. you mentioned gut health. Like that's, that's something like, I didn't even really like put those dots together. Oh, And, and so, you know, that could be something to investigate in terms of like, there may be, you know, some intolerances, some, some, you know, something there to address in terms of your gut health. Oh yeah. Well, my gut health's off. My appetite's gone. Cause I think my body knows like eat and you're going to feel um, terrible. So if this, if you're a normal, healthy person, okay. And you're like, I, I think I should be eating more. I just don't feel like I eat enough. Then uh, strength training is one of the best ways to stimulate a nice appetite, right? If you're, when your body wants to build muscle, uh, you tend to have your appetite tends to go up a little bit yeah. and you'll eat phase one anabolic. I always like hear people say they really increase their appetite, uh, appetite libido yep. that they'll, they'll, they'll mention. If your appetite is low and it's affecting your health and your doctor and people are like you need to eat more, um, then I would look at your, I would look at hormonal health, gut health, um, something underlying. Um, but otherwise, if you just want to gain muscle and it's hard for you to eat more, there are strategies. There are strategies to help yourself eat more. Um, this is where I would tell someone to seek out more palatable food. This is where I would tell people to eat, uh, you know, you know, carbohydrates in the morning it will tend to stimulate appetite a little bit later in the day. Um, this is where I tell people to avoid foods that cause digestive issues for sure. Uh, because you know, you, if you're trying to gain weight and you're eating large meals and the food is causing some bloat, uh, it's gonna be really hard for you to eat later on. So like easily digestible food makes a big difference here, but I do need a little bit more information to yeah, we're giving we're giving as as best I think generic yeah. general information. I mean, if I read the question and I saw a couple people underneath that also uh, challenged with this, it didn't sound like it sounded like they have trouble eating more to gain. Yeah, okay. uh, here's another. There's another thing that happens here too. This uh, this also happened to me where I could go all day and not eat, and then for dinner I had you know McDonald's with two Big Macs. Then it hits you much. all at once. Yeah, and then I eat this super heavy saturated fat meal, and then I'm good for another you know eight to twelve hours. I yeah. don't want to eat again. So uh, one of the things that actually helped stimulate my appetite was actually eating clean. 
was you starting the day off with like a bowl of oatmeal with some whey protein and yeah. blueberries or strawberries inside of it. Uh, and then I'd be hungry again. And then I'd eat another meal, where, which would be like chicken thighs and rice. And I actually found that these food, which also might have been playing into your point about the gut, is like what I might not have known I was doing was one, gotten used to only eating once a day. Then I slammed my gut with this junk food that was garbage. Yeah, you feel like crap. My body is just like, oh, trying to figure out how to process totally. it, and digest it. And so it's working all day and night to process all that. So it, it <laughs> keeps me from being hungry again. And actually, just by eating clean foods, I wanted to eat more. But I had to train that first. And I had to start with lighter stuff like an oatmeal or a yogurt type of first meal because I was trained for so long not to eat. And then that started to stimulate the appetite. And then I wouldn't make the mistake of going and having like, because I did go through this phase too, where, oh, I'd have this big, you know, Quiznos or Togo's sandwich and chips with, you know, a, a Coke to wash it down. And then again, that same feeling I would have, yep. I'd be full till dinner time. And so- um, eating good, balanced, uh, whole foods uh, helped stimulate my appetite and made me want easily to eat digestible. More. Yes, that's a big one. That same yes. thing here, Adam. I did the same thing. I would eat garbage, trying to pack in the calories, and then I couldn't eat for four hours because I just felt like crap. Until I started eating foods I could digest really well, and then that was no problem. Mm -hmm. Then an hour or two later, I was like, oh, I could eat again. You know, another strategy, by the way, if this is especially people with really fast metabolisms who have challenge getting enough calories. I had so much success with uh, my young male clients. At one point, I had a few young male clients. They were all athletes, uh, you know, like football players. They wanted to put on muscle. And it was such an easy way for them to gain weight. It was so funny. It was like, have a big glass of milk with each meal. It's all, mm -hmm. I, don't, it's all I told them to do. And it was like five extra, 500 extra calories. And it was for, they, they didn't have any issues with dairy. It was protein, a little bit of carbohydrates, some fats. And it was an easy way to add calories. Next question is from CMOS23. For each of you, what five things do you wish they taught in school? Oh, I'll tell you the, the, the number one thing. Mm. I'll tell you the number one thing that I think they need to teach in school is they need to teach kids about money. Yeah. yeah. Debt, was first finance, me. credit cards, loans, like, yeah. like In, I, investing, I, living below your means. I just don't understand. This is such a big deal that you don't, yeah. have, like, they teach you that you have to learn this on your own. After you get out of call, this is such a yeah. big deal that- They teach you how to get in debt, and that's about it. They don't teach you anything. They just it tell is, you to get in debt. It's yeah, crazy yeah. to me. I think the, I think Millionaire Next Door should be a, a read, something that every kid in high school should have to read. I just think that should be a mandatory read. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I found, that was a good recommendation from Mike Matthews, um, after I had, had gone through all the bad behaviors around money and then finally pieced together uh, all that stuff because it's just, and it's a lot of the stuff in there. I was like, wow, I would never guess that. I would never guess the type of car most millionaires drive and, you know, how, when the, the most things they have in common are like how, how mm -hmm. below their means they live and the five most, uh, so the, the, the five, uh, most common jobs of millionaires, I would have never guessed that either. Like there's things that, you assume that if you, there, someone's a millionaire just because they make lots of money, and that's actually not true at all. It has more to do with their relationship with money that has allowed them to stack it and invest it and be smart with it. And so I agree, money, self-awareness would be another thing. So like teaching kids about emotional intelligence and self-awareness and social awareness, which has a lot, especially today with just like, the, you know, communication, working with others, also like the self-awareness tool of understanding how to reflect on yourself and be constantly pursuing growth. Like, I just think that is a, a skill that is underdeveloped in most people. It's not talked about and highlighted in schools. So that would be something I would teach alongside with money. Let me give you an example of the money one. That's why I think it's such a big deal. Okay. If you had a $500,000 loan, which would be like a house, right? At 3% interest, which we had that not that long ago, your monthly interest, in other words, the money that you're going to interest, not going to your house, it's literally going to the bank, is $700 a month. You go up to 5%, you think, what's the big difference? 5%? You're now paying almost $1,300 yeah. in interest. That's how, that's the difference with those two things. Do that over the course of the loan, and you're talking about a significant amount of money that's gone. And most people have no idea yeah. what that looks like. Where I, you know, I, I know kids will graduate college with credit card debt, will pay a minimum payment. I've done this before. I'll show like cous young cousins of mine. I'll be like, do you realize you've spent to pay that down that $7,000 yeah. loan that you're paying interest? You really you've already spent $25,000. And they look at me like, 
Or you you paid three times what it's actually worth because you got a loan on it. Or it's whatever. yeah, it, yeah. it's uh, that 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 was a big one. I like what you said about self. I don't know what that we call that like philosophy. They used to do that, right? There used to be a class that was yeah. I don't know. I could you could probably umbrella like it under emotional yeah. intelligence, right? Because under emotional intelligence, would you would categorize like yeah. self awareness, social awareness? I think those. Are, I think yeah, entrepreneurship in terms of like teaching somebody how to run and operate a small business, it would be massively valuable. And two, would give perspective on in terms of all these policies that are being thrown out there that really uh like f cause friction and and people have no idea how that affects like the entire uh ecosystem uh within like their local communities and and everything else it would just i i think that like most people i i tend to argue with uh like have no idea like what it what it uh, involves in terms of like being able to, to sell and pitch, you know, a product, but also too to be able to like, you know, uh, organize staff, like all, all of the, the inner workings of a business, I think is so valuable to, to take into any kind of profession. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that back in the day, there were certain classes that were required that they eventually took off, but they took out, um, as being requirements. But I think that there was a lot of wisdom uh, and what they were telling kids to do. Cause now we know the value. And I'll give you one simple example, music, music was required for a while in a lot of schools. You know, if you go back, you know, 30, 40 years, everybody took some music and then they took it out. Cause like, Oh, it's not science, it's not technology. Mm -hmm. It's not math music. We now know the data now shows contributes to your ability to learn all those other topics, science, technology, it helps you learn better. It helps you learn better. The brain is wired uh, to remember through music. The fact that we take that out is incredible. Yeah. It's terrible. I think they should put that uh, back in. I also think PE or fitness, right? We started taking that out. Started mm -hmm. taking that out. Why? Because, oh, they can do that on their own. We need to focus on, again, science, technology, and math. We know that fit, healthy bodies learn better or less depressed, less anxious, and just overall, pe people are going to innovate better. You're going to have better citizens. That was wisdom. Put that back in. Make that something where it's required learning where the kids go out, especially nowadays where they don't, they're not, if they're not playing a structured sport, they're not playing. They're not doing anything. Put that in there. I think I, that's another one. I also think that more effort towards economics. I think that you, the economics class that I took was like half the year with yeah. uh, coupled with my history. And it was very, it's all theoretical, very too. biased the way they, they taught it. Like I think really uh, uh, getting, kids to understand really how the world works fi money wise financially. Like, I think we would look at, like, I love, um, Peter Schiff's book. It's called yeah, that's uh, right. why economy grows and why it crashes. I believe something is close to it that. Is that yeah. Um, I think that he teaches it in such a, uh, a layman's way that a kid could understand like that. And I think understanding fundamentally how our economy got to where it's at, really makes you look at some of these the things that we try and pass uh, today is like ridiculous and silly and things that we think are helping others, but yet in the grand scheme of things are really potentially hurting all of us. And so if you don't have a good grasp or understanding of basic economics and how we built this country, I think that it, you can fall into this trap of thinking, oh yeah, that's a good plan. We should, yeah. we should give money to that person or help that person. And like, that's you know, what would be works. good too would be um, some kind of mentorship uh, where a class or you know a year or semester would be. Um, mm. We have all these local businesses yeah. that allow you to go work for them. They're not going to pay you, but you get a grade just to because you learn a lot working for someone else. You learn a lot how to work with people. You learn how to produce. You learn responsibility and confidence. You used to be able to do that. Yeah. You used to be, you get a work you permit. You get that yeah. in college. You get a work a permit at college. like 15. I did that. You yeah. get a work permit at 15 and then you, and then you get some credit to where I forgot what credit I got to or what's, what class that got credited yeah. to, but I remember that I could do that yeah. back then. And then, you know, maybe some basic, um, like they used to call it home ec. Yeah. You learn well, how to, you know, like fix things yes. and how to like cook, Thank you know, because you. you get these kids that move out. I don't know how to do a damn thing for themselves. They're, they're worthless. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, I was going to totally bring that up in terms of just the, the basic things to keep you uh, to not just survive, but like just basic things around the house that you could fix. You don't need to like, you know, rely on other people to do it. Not to say you have to do it. It's just that you got to know how to do that kind of stuff. Like, so you're not worthless. Yeah. We, keep, we keep going. We might write a whole new curriculum here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the problem is with everything that we're saying? You know what the problem is? All of this would go through the filter of, you know, 
public schools, meaning if I'm like, we need a health class to teach people how to be healthy and eat healthy and all that stuff. It's going to go through, you know, their special interests and all that stuff. And then they're going to yeah. be like, hey, kids, here's what's healthy. They're going to follow some new pyramid that's yeah, upside right. down and stupid. That's uh, stupid. Yeah. You know, and here's debt. Here's what's good. Go get a huge student loan and learn, you know, this degree that's not going to get you a job. But right. It's worth it because, yeah. I know, Anyways. terrible. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our fitness guides. They're free. Download them. They'll help you out. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And you can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 